we're going to start this morning. Let's just begin to thank God. Let's just begin to worship God. Let's just begin to welcome him into this meeting this morning. Let's thank him for the grace. Let's thank him for his presence. Let's thank him for even the gift of life that we get to be here this month. Yet again, January, February, March, April, now May, we're here again this morning gathering before God. And you are here. It's not a coincidence. It's not an accident. It's just an orchestration of God's mercy. So let's just thank God for our lives. Thank God for the grace to be here, for the, for his mercies, for, for keeping us, for protecting us. Let's just begin to give thanks to God wherever we are. Let's just make our hearts into words. And let's just say, thank you, Lord. Only us understand the things that we may have passed through in the month of April. Usually when there's supposed to be, it's a it's, season it's of breakthrough. It feels like that is when the warfare becomes hot. So some of us can really understand and relate to that when I say only us understand the things that we you know passed during the month of April. But we just want to thank God because we are not consumed. We were not consumed by his mercy. We were not consumed. We are here today. We are alive today. We are here to testify of his goodness. Let's just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of a new month, for the gift of a new day. Father, we just say thank you. Lord, I'm here to say thank you, Brate, make a make a Ugamia Suberi da Kalia, the Sende Breke de Kete, Makaza Kadaka de Kete. Rabadaka de Kete Breke de Kema, O Suze Breke de Kete, Katala Bada Kando Zakata, Rabba Baba de Kete Kete Kete, Rabba Pada Kanda Kato Mekete, Rabba Kanda Brata Kando Zekete, Arame Teligombre de Getelia, Emisco Sambra de Gete, O Medaja Kalida Masinda Koliam Basse, Lord, we thank you, Magali Kazakata, Brata Kata, Rubente Medabra de Gete, Mashanda da de Kande de Gabra de Gete, Lord, we worship you, Lord, we worship you, Masha Kala Bariam Basigatone, Mereba Saka Libra Kambe de Getelia, Mokosidari Basida Braca Teke Tebra Handa Kabizona Sida, Lord, we worship your name. Lord, we worship your name. Lord, we worship your name. We have somebody who has a device playing in the background and it's interrupting the prayers. If you can just mute, thank you. Mashado Barakisan de Breke de Ketaba da Zakan de Breme Kazekan de Liga Batazayana Sekalubaria Zifrate Makanda Shando. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, before we go on into the prayers today, I just want to say one more. I'll give one more prayer of um, Thanksgiving. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 43 and verse 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. It says, And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. This is God's promise to us. It says, The flame will not kindle upon you. That is that you will come out and you will not smell like that smoke. And some of us know that we indeed passed through what felt like the waters. It felt like the flood. It felt like fire. It felt like everything was against us. It was like once we passed through the waters and we thought, you know, we had come to a place of relaxation or rest, then the rivers, you know, they came at us. And just when we thought, okay, let's at least, you know, get a little moment of peace. Let's, let's rest a little. Then the fire came. It really felt that way in the month of April for some people. But by the mercies of God, as the Bible said, his promise ever sure, ever faithful. It says it will not overwhelm you. It will not overflow you. It will not burn you. And that's exactly our testimony. Some of us can testify that indeed, as much as the enemy came at us with everything that he had in his arsenal, it did not overflow us. It did not overwhelm us. It did not burn us. Let's just give thanks to God for that. Let's just give thanks to God for that. Some people go through even a fraction of what we have had to 
to to endure and then they and they didn't even make it they did not even make it they ended up you know in in, you know a very different situation so let's just just give thanks to god Thank you, Father, because we put our trust in you and we were not ashamed, we were not overcome. Lord, we just say thank you. Maka Isakaya Abatidare, Mende Rabba Shakando Brakamida Rantili Segamio, Alibo Mandra Bashatta Braka, Begete Me, Dido Cabro Mokus Sende Taliba, Araba Bande Shande Gaparama Tege Breke Segete Monza, Meko Bidia Masisina, Rabata Cambra de Getele, Cambra de Getelia, Masis of Breke Deke, Brada Kanda Suze, Cambra de Getri, Mavita Braca da Cadege Secete, Rabaca da Cacazo, the Cate Mecate, Rabida Late, Mansis to get Brada da Tamuda Shayandala. Lord, we thank you for keeping us. Lord, we thank you for preserving us. Lord, we thank you for your protection. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Oh God, we worship you. Maka Yakate, Mande La de Bande Lande Bande Sima Cora Bete Jacatalia in the Subrecam Belatima Savado. Lord, we will never tire of giving you thanks. We will never tire of giving you thanks. Masa Tali Caberiamo, Alimo Ambra Atiga Vida Shatale Gepede Kesanda, Labada Kamekete, Labade Makatene Goto Zali Makatia, Ladayanda Shande Dekete. Oh Lord, we thank you. Break a make a vida pura me shande. Reba take a maza la brada kata make a diani sune paralida shata kapalia. Thank you, Jesus. Ragu kambele besi mosko kata zadi abetina. Ademe tili bata gume shanga kata bezo ketani. In the last rabba me seke seke ta. In the gabro koteke brada kaba da 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 Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, and welcome once again for those that just joined us somewhere, you know, along the line. Um, we're going to take some prayers this month and we are going to trust God to help us to pray them like we ought. Um, as I prepared for the prayers this month, I just, you know, tried to see what where God wanted us to center, where God wanted us to focus. And more and more he drew me into this topic and um I can I think I can understand why it is that we're going to be praying along these lines this month. And it is my prayer that even as we begin to take this uh you know prayers within the next three days, that God will indeed um show us his plans, his intentions for us, and he will um bring us into a new level of awareness of him, okay, and that it will be reflected in the quality of life that we live. And so as I prepared for the prayers um, this month, I, the Holy Spirit kept drawing me to this topic of our eyes, our eyes being opened, just, you know, our eyes being opened and how much we actually know of him. It just, I don't know, it's quite an interesting topic. And, you know, initially I thought, well, it's, it's not even that that deep, but the more that I've spent time with it, the more I realized that, you know, it is, it is in fact that deep. I was sharing on the Bible study on Saturday that in the month of May, I want to kind of settle on some of these topics. And it felt like a burden for me because as much as I want to share, the Holy Spirit keeps bringing me back here. And I want to share a scripture today to just kind of point, you know, exactly what, what it is that we're up against here. Because the things that um, I would say the Holy Spirit has been revealing to me recently, they've even made me question like, so all this time, what have I been doing, right? And it's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's not an accident. It's not carelessness. It's it's not. It's a deliberate, um, it's a deliberate mechanism that is put in place. And I'll read from Second Corinthians chapter three and um, verse fifteen. Actually, um, let me start from twelve. Actually, it says here. It says, saying then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. From verse 14, it says, but their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. 
what I want to point out here is actually in verse 15, it says, but even until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Even until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is still upon their heart. It says, but nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. And the, the reality is this, yeah, that's what the Bible says. It says that when their hearts are turned, you know, the veil shall be taken away. But in truth, many of us can testify that as much as we have been spending time with God, as much as we, you know, have supposedly been praying and, you know, studying our Bible and everything, the reality is that many things that are in the Bible still feel very veiled from us. Certain verses that we've been reading since, we've been children since, we've been going to kids' church, till now, they're still veiled. And it's, 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 a, it's quite a hard thing to, to wrap our mind around. But that's the truth. Except maybe you, you know, feel that you've come to a place of perfect knowledge and understanding of the scriptures, in which case, you know, thank God for that. But many of us, many of us, nobody, I mean, everybody can, can, can say this on some level. There are still portions that, even though you've read it and you've read it and you've read, you just still can't figure out what it is that it's saying. It's still not making practical meaning in your life. And so this month, that's what the Holy Spirit kind of wants me to focus on because the problem is not asking people to read the Bible for the most part. It's not that. It's that even when it's read, as the Bible described, it's like it's still built. And you see that thing that he said about um, the Old Testament. That part happens to be so true. Many people have no problem going through the New Testament and would read it over and over and over. But being able to spend time in the Old Testament and read it, not just to understand the story and relate the story, but to truly understand what is being painted, to, be on, to understand what was being depicted, to understand the, the types and shadows being presented to us that lend more meaning, deeper and richer meaning into the New Testament is still not available. So this morning, we're going to be praying. And in the course of the next three days, this is where prayers are going to center because we, we cannot do this. We can't continue to do this anymore. We are asking God to help us, to bring us to a point where we are no longer just partaking of reading so that we can say we read because they said as a good Christian, you must read your Bible. No, we are asking that we now, when we enter the Bible now, let it be a different experience for us. Let it be a different book. Let the eyes of our understanding be open. And that is the first um, prayer we're going to be taking this morning. It's in Ephesians chapter 1. And I'll read it briefly um, from verse uh, 15 to 18. Okay, that's where our prayers are going to be from this morning. We're actually going to be asking God to open the eyes of our understanding. Open the eyes of our understanding. It says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for, for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what the hope, what is the hope of his calling that you may know. That's where I wanted to, to, to peg it today as we enter into the prayers. That you may know. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. He's talking about that you may know the, what the hope of his calling is, the riches of the glory of his inheritance. All of that. That is that everything else that will happen to you is hinged on the eyes of your understanding being open and causing you to know. So that's going to be our first prayer this morning. Father, in this month of May, we're asking that you open the eyes of our understanding. I've come to a point where I don't even deceive myself about these things anymore. I'm telling you that even the smallest thing, you find that what you thought you knew, you, you, you don't even know it that well. Because the moment you come to God and ask God, can you explain this thing to me? Can you help me understand this thing? Then you almost feel like, what did I really think that I knew then? There is a level of understanding. There is a level of understanding that only God supplies, and it's only that level of understanding that lends the right meaning to issues, to things, to, to materials, 
So we're going to open our mouth and we're going to pray this morning. I say, Father, cause the eyes of my understanding to be open. Cause the eyes of my understanding to be open. I no longer want to approach issues. I no longer want to approach the Bible as business as usual. I want to see things for what they really are. I want my eyes to be open. Father, in the name of Jesus, let that work begin on my eyes, even in this month, in the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and pray. Bake mora fatania bisina, gila bretan de shapo dake man de vete komi is galia betina, rapa de. Amen, amen, amen. You know, this thing, I was listening to um, a message. And you see, at least for me, I spent five years in the university, right? Because of my program. And it happened to be a Christian university where, you know, going to church was enforced, reading the Bible was enforced and all of that. And I wasn't even trying to do it, you know, as far oh, let me just be able to graduate. No, I actually was, you know, I had given my life to Christ and I was truly, you know, uh, committed to, to, to the things of God at that time. So it wasn't like I was doing it on that duress. I actually, you know, was enjoying it and thankful. But you know, the funny thing is this, recently I would go back and I would listen to those, some of those same messages that were preached by the same man of God that time. And it's like, I am hearing it differently. It's like I am seeing it differently. And I asked myself, I said, what was then happening to me those five years that I sat down there? What was going on with my eyes? What was going on with my ears? Again, remember, so I wasn't sitting down there to fulfill righteousness. I wasn't sitting down there so that they won't, they won't mark me absent. No, I actually wanted to hear. And I sat down there and in my mind, I heard and they, they raised prayer points after they finished preaching. And I prayed the prayer too. But I go back now and I, I'm listening to it and I'm like, what was going on with my ears? What was going on with my understanding? Because I heard it. But I tell you that the eyes of my understanding were not open. I don't even, want, I can't tell you I know why. I don't know why. But the eyes of my understanding were not open. Because I heard those things. I participated. I shouted. But the eyes of my understanding were not open. In fact, certain instructions would be given, you know, we'd be asked to do things. And I know it, but 
the eyes of my understanding were not open. So I don't know what was going on. In I tell you, I don't know what it is that was going on. But I find that that's what, what happens for many of us. Many, many, many of us. We hear these things. We, 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 we repeat these things. But so there, it, there's a connection that has not yet been made. And so it hasn't come to the point where it's able to deliver life. Because that is the end goal of all of these things that are in the scripture. Is to the end that they deliver life. It's to the end that they deliver life. But until the eyes of our understanding becomes open, we cannot see it. We cannot see it. And because we cannot see it, it doesn't yet belong to us. The way things work in, this, in the realm of the spirit is that until you know a thing, it's not yet yours. Even if it has been given to you. And uh, we talk about this a lot when we deal on certain topics and when we teach. Even if something is yours, it's like having a bank account in your name, but not knowing that it exists. And you could very well starve as a result of that. That is how things operate in the realm of the spirit. Until you know, it will not yet be yours. So God may say certain things in the Bible. God may give certain promises in the Bible. And you can continue to repeat it. But until you know, and there is a knowing that is different from head knowledge. It is a knowing that has become one with you. Until you know, it will not be yours. And this is why the Bible says, the eyes of your understanding have to be open. So that you don't just know it intellectually, but it, it is one with you. You can't separate it from you. That's why this, the Bible talks about Jesus. It says, and the word became flesh. That is what is supposed to happen to you when you study enough of the word. It's supposed to be bound to you so much that it has now become one with you. It's almost like saying it has become flesh. It dwells in you. It is one with you. We're going to be praying now. Like in 2 Kings chapter 6, when Elisha prayed and asked for God to open the eyes of his servant, he said, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. And it was then that the eyes of that servant became open. Prior to that, the same fine, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, that same encampment that was around them, it was always there. The help that God provided, it was there. The horses and the chariots of fire, they were there. They were there, but he didn't see them. And because he didn't see them, he could have very well made a misstep. He could have very well taken a wrong decision. Imagine that Elisha was not there, what this man would have done. Until your eyes are open, certain decisions that you would take, even when you take it with your best intentions, they will still be in error. But Elisha prayed for this young man who was already in panic mode. I said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. You see, Elisha was functioning from a place where he could see. So his stance, his posture, his demeanor, everything was different. Everything was different. But this young man, not so for him. And Elisha had to pray. And it was only when his eyes were opened that he could act accordingly. Because now he knew what belonged to him. He knew what had been made available to him. So we're going to be taking that prayer yet again now. And this time we're saying, Father, open my eyes. This is such an important prayer. It is what will actually even preserve you and protect you from deception. That you will not sit down where somebody is teaching something that is not accurate. And then only later, how many years later to find yourself and realize that you wasted this time believing something that wasn't even true. Ask God to open your eyes beyond the scripture, even situations around you, so that you can see them for what they are and then make your move accordingly. Until we see things for what they really are, our best intentions will still end up as errors. They will still end up as errors that we will only have to go back and continue to clean up. And we don't want to remain in a cleanup cycle. We want to see accurately and then move accurately. So open your mouth this morning and ask God. Because I said that when I said oh, we're going to be dealing with certain topics, this, this is the burden that sat on my heart. Anything can be taught. Anything can be said. Anybody can come and say anything. And anybody can get excited about hearing anything. But only the, 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 the understanding that is open, the eyes that are open can really take advantage of what is being delivered. So just ask God. You spend so much time these days, you know, studying your Bible, attending Bible studies, joining fellowships. You spend so much time. There's a hunger. There's a desire in you for truth. But you need for that your eyes to be open so that you can actually maximize it. In this prayer, we are still asking the same prayer. So you never, you don't get tired, please. I don't want us to do this kind of prayer where we pray one prayer for five minutes and we believe, yes, we have done it and then we jump. No, we are still here. God opened my eyes. 
open my eyes to things around me open my eyes to see people for what they are open my eyes to see situations for what they are open my eyes to see the truth for what it is open my eyes to see you jesus exactly as you are open my eyes to see me as i am open my eyes oh god this is our prayer in this segment so just you know open your mouth and pray wherever you are Thank you for the Amen. 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 You know, we're still we're still here. Please don't get tired because I tell you, when this is done for you, when this miracle actually takes place in your life. It, it will make the difference and you, you know you will be glad you spend the time you know making these prayers recently i was listening to a man of god um who was teaching um on site and he pointed something out that i didn't even realize right and <clears throat> you see in the old testament there were you know different things that were done by the men of god you know there's you know the story of uh you know Naaman who was healed of leprosy like different things happened in the old testament you know people were healed of different things um many different things happened you know fire was called down from heaven all of that but he pointed out the fact that as of all of that during all of that time up until the time of jesus there hadn't been a miracle that involved the giving of sight to the blind person and like i said I, it wasn't something i took note of because you know you just read the bible you just keep reading like okay so this person did this that person did that okay this person the lame person okay that person that had leprosy okay and but you just like blow through it right and you don't realize it and he pointed out the fact that you know it was it was that that was the first time it happened and it it caused me to pause because again it's part of what i'm saying like 
when your eyes are not opened, you gloss over things that are not so small, that are quite significant, that we should actually know. And it, it made me pause, like, wow, you know, but it said some, it says something very interesting. It says something very important because there is an element of of um what was committed to um to Jesus that like I said, you don't get to see before. Prior to that time, yes, people could, you know, get healed of leprosy, you know, back, could get called down. All, all these kinds of things could happen. But it hadn't happened that somebody who was born blind, their eyes, the person's eyes was open. And you, if you remember that story of the, of the man who was born blind, and his disciples were asked, he said, why, you know, what, what happened here? Who sinned that this man was born blind? What exactly did he do? For him to be born blind what was the reason and he said he didn't nobody he's not his father he's not his mother he's not him nobody sinned because how could he possibly sin anyway to be born blind is it going to be in the womb that he sinned so it was saying there was no reason for that but it has happened that um you know god will be glorified and so here's the thing there's a dimension of god's glory that will only begin to to take effect in your life that will only begin to be seen in your life when your eyes indeed are opened yes 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 there is a dimension of glory that is tied to your eyes being open yes there is a dimension of that glory of god that is directly tied to your eyes being open so yes you have you know you believe in god you give your you've given your life to christ all of that yes but i tell you that there is a dimension of god's glory that is supposed to be seen in your life but it is tied to how well your eyes are open. Remember in the Bible study on Saturday, we talked about this and we said, you know, if the light, if your eyes, you know, are seen properly, you know, and, and you know, the light in your body is good. That was what we, were, we, were, uh, we spent some time on saying that the quality of your life is dependent on the quality of the light that you have, is dependent on how good your eyes, since if your eye is single, if your eye is good, that was what another translation put it as. If your eye is good, then the light on your body is great. So it was basically saying the quality of your life is tied to how good your eye is. As simple as that. And so that's why we are praying. Because indeed the quality of your life is what is a showcase, is what is, is a, a, a showpiece of God's glory. It's like a billboard for the glory of God. And so that quality of light that is supposed to, to, to send a loud message of the glory of God, it will not happen except your eyes can see properly. So we're going to say that prayer one more time, understanding this, that as much as you desire for God to bless you and for God to do certain things in your life and for God to elevate you, he wants to do it for you even more. But it requires that your eyes be open. So we're going to take that prayer one more time. We're going to say, Father, I refuse to live this life that you've called me to without your glory being evident on my life. I refuse to live and continue to do things and be like other people. I'm asking for a dimension of your glory to be revealed in my life, even as my sight is open. That's what we're going to ask for. We're going to ask for God to open our sight, not just so we can show people that we see, not just so that we can boast of being able to see, but just so that his glory may be seen and evident in our life. Let's open our mouths and pray. Thank you. 
this is the second to the last prayer point um but i want us to take it um let's look at this uh, uh part of the bible let's look at um a story of um someone who god healed their eyes okay now this is mark chapter 8 and verse 22 Mark chapter 8 and verse 22. Okay. Here it says, it says, and he cometh to Bethsaida. That's talking about Jesus. It says, and they bring a man, blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when, when he had spit on his eye and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. This is somebody who couldn't see. He was blind. And God, Jesus touched his eyes. And Jesus said, can you see? And he said, I see. But he didn't see clearly. He said, but I see men as trees walking. And this describes many of us today. So we can, you know, when we make this kind of prayers, it's like, well, you know, thankfully my eyes are open. You know, I see, you know, oh, I, I'm able to see this. I'm able to see that. But when we look at it deeper, it's like we're seeing like this man who Jesus had just touched his eye. He said, I see, I see men as trees walking. And so Jesus, after that, put his hands upon his, again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Some of us today are seeing, but we are seeing men as trees. So our sight is still obscure. Our decisions are still faulty. Our stand, our viewpoint is still is still is, is still suffering. Our decision making process is still impacted because we are still seeing men as trees. And as long as we are seeing men as trees, we are most like I mean we're just a step away from the person who is blind, but there's still a problem with how we are navigating life. So if you are now walking past and you see a man and it's like a tree, you don't know to greet, you don't even know who that person is that's beside you. So when you see a man as a tree, even the one that's supposed to be your destiny helper, you can't recognize them from the person who is a, a, a nuisance on the road because you are still seeing men as trees. So everybody, everything is looking the same to you. That's how it is for some of us. It's what we're seeing, but we are not yet seen to a gra- we're not seen to, the, to, the, to a level of details to where we can say, okay, this, this is not a tree. This is actually a man. It's not that a tree is walking. It's, this is a man. And not just a man. This is the kind of man this person is. This is the kind of man that person is. This is the one that I should be associated with. So we're going to be praying also because this is where some of us fall. It's not that we are not seeing. It's that we are seeing men as trees. Our vision is still blurry. It's still not perfect. We are still not seeing things properly. So yes, it's like out of a hundred, mm, we're getting like 20, we're getting like 30. But you see what, God, what Jesus does is he and never he did it such that anybody should see that halfway. That His intention that was that when that he touches your eyes, me. you will see and you will see well. You would see 100 over 100. So we're not living here settling for just a little, like, oh, at least I can see a little bit. Oh, I just see a little here and there. Sometimes some of us are still, you know, talking about our dreams. Um, some of us still come and uh, we're asking, you know, about our dreams. And it's hard for anybody to even explain it to you. Why? Because you saw the dream and it was like you were seeing men as trees. 
So you can't even explain the details of what you saw because you didn't even see it well. The whole picture is perfect from God, but when it landed to you in your dream or when it landed to you in your vision, it came as it was like, like trees. You were seeing men as trees. So even when you come and say, oh, help me explain this dream, it can't be explained to you because you didn't even get the picture downloaded properly. It's like to bring that picture of, of something that looks like a tree and say, oh, what is this? What complexion is this man? I don't see a man. I see trees. So this is where we need to start troubleshooting from. So for some of us who are, are like, okay, yeah, I'm seeing and all of that. 20 over 100 is not enough. 50 over 100. We are asking for 100. If I, as they say it in, in, a, in a, I guess, a, in medical terms, 2020 vision. 2020 vision. We want to see properly. We don't want to see men as trees anymore. So this is what we're going to be asking for in this segment of the prayer. Father, even in the areas where I think that I, I thought that I was seen, even in the areas that it looked like I was seen, Father, I'm asking for perfected vision. I'm asking for 2020 perfected vision in these different areas of my life, whether it's my spiritual sight, whether it's in my career, whether, whatever, my family, whatever it may be, my eyes be open 2020. I want to see properly. I don't want to see men as trees. I want to see men Men as men in the name of Jesus. Let's take that prayer. Neka Torabi Avira Visantaliando Rebeke Teke Brekete Basha Malagazis Kaboroma Nigaya Sina Rabata Kabro do Komende Medega Brasina Malaga Brada Bande Kende Prokote Mashada Bana Gaza Liga Bande Preneka Beso Menegetiri Asusa Rababa Kalima we're going to be taking the last prayer before we close this morning but before we do that you know i want to mention this right because this was this this is this is what has happened to many of us right you know when a person is blind you know most times mm -hmm. you know you would require the help of someone maybe to get you around especially places where you're not familiar right you know if it's your own space you, know, you navigate your space and you know maybe you kind of like learn it but if you if you can't see you know most times you need someone to help you and you know what that means it means that your life is dependent on you know that person who is helping you if they're a good person if they have the best intentions and all of that and this quite explains what has happened to many of us you know the areas of god that we needed to know and that we didn't see and somehow we landed in you know these different groups where we hoped to learn 
and then we honestly were dependent on what we were getting from there and some of us it you know we just didn't get what we needed from there like i said you know when you can't see you, the quality of your life is tied to the quality of help that you are getting the person who is in your life and so some of us have been trapped in that situation where these people who should have been helping us navigate you know when we didn't have the sight even they didn't have the ability to help us so they didn't have the best intentions and all of that and so because of that our life suffered our life suffered. But today, God is bringing us out of that place. God is bringing us out of that place of lack, that place of lack of, of knowledge, that place of lack of sight, that place of lack of awareness that has kept us trapped, that has kept us limited. Where as much as we've prayed, we've still not been able to actualize or, or, or bring our lives into, into certain experiences simply because our sight was impacted. So this is the end of that season in our life in the name of Jesus. There is a reason the Holy Spirit wants us to spend time on this because I'm telling you, we can go on listening to every kind of preacher, every kind of sermon, attending every kind of program, but until our eyes are open, mm, there's a beautiful anointing on the altar this morning and I feel it. And I feel that it is present because people's eyes are being impacted where they are. People's eyes are being touched. I can feel that anointing, that people's eyes are being touched. There's a work going on in different people's eyes right now, wherever we are. Some of us had been praying this before we even brought it here to the um, altar this month. Some of us, it had been a thing on our hearts. But I tell you, it's something that I spent time thinking about too. What did I do? What was I doing all this time? Listening to these things and I reading all this thing, but I still didn't see what was going on. I had the right intentions and all of that. And that's where some of us are. And I can I tell you that anointing is present this morning to break the yoke of blindness, to break the yoke of blindness. Yes, to break the yoke of blindness. So I'm going to wrap this up now and I'm going to pray for, um, you know, different groups of people. Father, everyone who has been bound by that yoke of blindness, let that yoke be broken today, even this morning by the anointing in the name of Jesus. People who, whose lives have been as a result of this, this, this thing, this blindness, because of that blindness, you chose wrong. Because of that blindness, you decided wrong. Because of that blindness, you attached yourself to the wrong person. Oh, Father, today, uh, that yoke of blindness is broken today in the name of Jesus. Everyone on this platform who is impacted in this way, that their sight has been impacted and they have not been able to see as they should. Father, let that yoke of blindness be broken today in the name of Jesus. Mm. I feel the, oh, 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 I feel this very, very strongly this morning. The Holy Spirit is touching a few people. The Holy Spirit is touching a few people this morning. He's touching a few people this morning. He's touching a few people this morning to the end that the scales of your, on your eyes fall off. To the end that the scales on your eyes fall off. To the end that the scales of your eyes fall off. In the name of Jesus, Father, touch, Father, touch, Father, touch. Father touch, Father touch, Father touch. Ye kaboria mosande li adoshka ambre panante bre na kuzavani galia te simi kandele tua. Father, I ask that you move through our midst even this morning and begin to touch the eyes, begin to touch the eyes, begin to touch the eyes that need to be visited even this morning in the name of Jesus. Those people whose cases are an emergency that their eyes must be touched this morning because their lives depend on it. Father, begin to touch. Father, begin to touch. Father, begin to touch. Father, begin to touch. Father, begin to touch in the name of Jesus. Let every yoke of blindness be broken. Let every yoke of blindness be broken. Let every case of partial sight be recovered. Let the let sight be perfected in the name of Jesus. Let sight be restored. Let sight be restored. Let sight be restored in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last thing I want to pray for before we, we uh, exit the call this morning is those people who one trauma or another has impacted your eyes. So you were seeing properly. Your sight was fine. And it's just like how in real life people can, you know, get into some situations, some accident, you know, that, you know, call the trauma to the eye, you know, like, something hits the and then you're not seen properly and i know that there are some people on this altar who this is what's going on with them you were you had a season of your life where you were seen properly but due to one trauma or another that impacted your eye kind of like a blow to your eye it impacted your sight and you are not seen properly as a result of that god wants to heal that eye god wants to heal that eye god wants to heal that eye that eye that suffered trauma that eye that suffered the impact and as a result, the sight was affected. That eye is being healed today in the name of Jesus. Father, we this group of 
women and as many people as have suffered one form of trauma or another that has affected their sight let their sight be healed even today in the name of jesus let those eyes be healed even today in the name of jesus let the effect of that trauma be reversed and let them be restored even today in the name of jesus from today henceforth let them go forth and begin to see even as you ask you ordained for them to in the beginning in the name of jesus let them begin to see even better than they used to in the name of jesus manda brokote meza kaliba ariando Shande Rabata Kambe Bregetege Bene Kabasini Barakunese Manasia Rababa Badekete Mende Kende Bringetene Baskima Daria Tushande. There is somebody on the call today that from time to time what happens is that it will be like you are in a season where you are fine, where your eyes are working fine, and then a time will come where it's like that eye is now a point of concern for you. It's like when the enemy decides to bother you, when he decides to strike you, it will be your eye that he strikes. Even if it meant to hit any other part of your body, any part of your life, he will come for your eye first so that by affecting that eye, he will then be able to touch other parts of your body. I don't know who that person is or the other part of your life. I don't know who that person is right now, but that, that, that yoke is broken over your life in the name of Jesus. This recurring, this recurring episode, this recurring episode of your eye being attacked. Oh, for a season you are seen properly, for a season you are doing well, then the enemy comes, he doesn't touch any other part of you, just go straight for your eye, the same area of your eye, the same part of your eye, every single time, that cycle comes to an end today in the name of Jesus, that cycle comes to an end today in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, today you have been delivered from that repeated cycle of that impact to your eye in the name of Jesus, from today henceforth you go forth and you prosper and you see exactly how God intended for you to, and we decree and we demand that the enemy takes his hand off your eyes even today in the name of Jesus, thank you Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you, ladies. God bless you, ladies. I pray that God will indeed begin to do a deep work in your eyes. You need it for your own life. You can't depend, like you, you can't trust your well-being to other people to you know help you around. So God will open every one of our eyes today in whatever areas that you know we have been blinded in the name of Jesus. Please be sure to be present tomorrow and be present on Wednesday as well. Thank you, God bless you, and have a wonderful day ahead. Bye everyone. Thank you, Thank you. Bye. God bless you.